Department. What we're going to try and do is look under the bonnet of the government with the former head of the civil service to see what kind of shape the machine's in. But first, let's remind ourselves what Dominic Cummings actually had to say on Wednesday. The truth is that senior ministers, senior officials, senior advisers like me fell disastrously short of the standards that the public has a right to expect of its government in a crisis like this. When the public needed us most, the government failed. Tens of thousands of people died who didn't need to die. The government rhetoric was, we put a shield around care homes and blah, blah, blah. It was complete nonsense. Quite the opposite of putting a shield around them, we sent people with COVID back to the care homes. The Secretary of State for Health should have been fired for at least 15, 20 things, including lying to everybody in multiple occasions, in meeting after meeting in the, in the Cabinet room and publicly. The view of various officials inside number 10 was, um, if we have the Prime Minister chair in Cobra meetings and he just tells everyone it's swine flu, don't worry about it, I'm going to get Chris Whitty to inject me live on TV with coronavirus so everyone realises it's nothing to be frightened of, that would be, that would not help actually serious planning. You guys in the political parties need to ask yourselves, what is it about your parties that give choices like Johnson versus Corbyn? And we have to ask, what is it about Whitehall to promote so many senior people who are completely out of their depth. There is no plan. We're in huge trouble. I've come through here to the, to Helen McEnroe said, I've come through here to the Prime Minister's office to tell you all, quote, I think we are absolutely Lord Kerslake, Bob Kerslake, was head of the civil service for three years to 2014 having spent more than a decade as chief executive of Sheffield City Council. In recent years, though he himself sits as a crossbench peer, he's advised the Labour Party on what it needs to do to prepare for government. Um, Bob Kerslake, what is it about Whitehall? Uh, did you get any answers uh, from Dominic Cummings' testimony? Did you learn anything that you didn't already know? Uh, well, look, I've been a vocal critic of Dominic Cummings and some of the things he said, but I have to say we learned a lot on Wednesday and we should, in a sense, be grateful that we've had this early indication of just how things actually worked uh, behind the, the number 10 door. Uh, and there were, I th I'm afraid, some serious failings that have to be recognised. The focus has been on the political failings, but there are also lessons to be learned for the civil service and indeed for the whole of the government machine as well. Uh, I'm a, a great supporter of much of what the civil service does. There are some very able people there. But if we don't learn, uh, then there's a real risk, uh, and this is a point that Cummings made, that we're simply ill-prepared for the next time we face this kind of crisis. So yes, there are some serious lessons to be learned here about our preparations, uh, about how we listened and learned uh, the experiences from other countries, about the pace at which we did things, and crucially about the openness with which we communicated with the public. So, yes, definitely, there's something to learn here. This is, thank you. This is, this is very interesting. This, these issues of pace and openness were, in a sense, illuminated by an example that he and other people have quoted, which is that the great success of the government during the pandemic, whatever its other mistakes, has been the vaccine programme. And that was delivered by a task force recruited largely from outside Whitehall, operating to rules that are not unknown, but quite uncommon within Whitehall. Um, is that the way you saw it? And do you think that we don't have to go abroad? Can we learn lessons from that experience? I think we can. Uh, it's fine to bring in outside people at the right point, at the right time. But of course, they work with the civil service and crucially in this instance, work with the NHS. We talk about the success of the task force, but what about the success of our NHS in organising and delivering those vaccines? A great success and we should celebrate that. I'm not averse to bringing in people from outside. But what I think is our fundamental challenge as a country here, Trevor, is our complacency and arrogance, the so-called British exceptionalism that uh, we're always gonna be the best. And we just need to approach the lessons learned here with a sense of humility. We have something to learn and something to improve. And by the way, I think we should be having this inquiry sooner rather than later. I do not accept the arguments you know, that we heard from the minister about the delay. 
uh, it's vitally important for the families who were lost loved ones or who got long COVID uh, to hear those uh, lessons now. Otherwise, all we're going to get is the kind of partial tit for tat uh, testimonies of Cummings and others. So uh, it, you're pretty clear, really, here, aren't you, that all of those people who pop up on radio and television and say we have this extraordinary Rolls-Royce machine that actually the problem is all to do with the politicians and their silliness and so on, um, really need to take a good look at their, uh, the way our public services work. Uh, Bingham made a, a rather interesting example where she said that they had to call a meeting and um, they were told that they had to invite 285 people within the civil service to it. Is that the kind of thing that you think we need to do something about? Yeah, we need to be more agile. Now, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of things that the civil service does extraordinarily well. So this is not an attack on the civil service. My argument against Cummings was that you don't change and improve organisations by going to war with them. But if we want to really be the best, we have to learn lessons. Uh, we need to be more agile. We crucially need to be more prepared. In 2019, we thought we were one of the best prepared countries in the world for a pandemic. We clearly weren't. Uh, similarly, the communications has been a major issue. We weren't even allowed to know who was on the SAGE committee, never mind what it was actually saying and doing. I think there's nothing short of a revolution needed in the way we run this country. It's about how politicians conduct themselves, but it's also about how our public servants do their role as well. Not that often the head of civil service calls for a revolution, but I, I, I guess uh, what you're saying is that if we were hit with something similar to January 2020 in January 2022, at the mm. present, in the present configuration, actually, we'd be no better off uh, in coping with it. Well, we'd have learned some lessons, of course. I don't want to say there won't be, and indeed, uh, there were lessons learned. But just look at the uh, way in which we handled the second lockdown. It felt like... Uh, we really had learned almost nothing. And this is the point Keir Starmer has made, uh, that you can just about understand how things were in the first lockdown. But to go through it again in the second lockdown shows a, a paucity of, uh, of learning, really. So we wouldn't be as better placed uh, as we need to be if we f faced another pandemic. And crucially for me, we need to be better at two things. Number one, we need to be better at long-term planning in this country, not always reacting, if you'll forgive me, to the latest news story. And number two, we need to be much, much better at working across government uh, in a collaborative way uh, and being able to move rapidly. You don't need 250 people in a meeting if you're going to make serious decisions. Uh, Kate what, Bingham was right. Well, one quick point, if I may. You, you, in a speech when you left in 2014, uh, talked about uh, the need for greater diversity of skills and a new approach to data and devolution. Patricia Hodgson, who you know is a, a distinguished public servant, published a report this week which actually said that um, the civil service really needs to up its game in the use of technology and digital and so on. Uh, do you detect that there's been any response to your 2014 speech uh, in the seven years since? in uh, improving the way we deal with um, delivery in the civil service? I think we've got a lot more to do. Um, I believe passionately in open government. Um, I believe passionately in having a more diverse civil service, not just in terms of ethnicity and gender, or those are crucially important, but actually in terms of class as well, in terms of the range of skills and, and how much we value those technical skills. That hasn't in the past been seen as the most important thing to have uh, in, 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 in being a civil servant. We now need to really recognise that those deficiencies I talked about have to be addressed if we're going to be genuinely world-class. We should, in a way, stop saying we're world-class until we've addressed them. Lord Kerslake, thank you very much indeed.